What do you know about my family? I don't know anything. Fair enough. For over 40 years, The Punisher has been kicking ass, taking names, and killing a lot, I repeat, a lot of people. Now in the comics, Frank Castle has nuked the X-Men, he was a geisha, and used a little person as a human shield against Wolverine. Yeah, that's not even the weirdest thing in that comic. Frank would end up flattening Wolverine with a steamroller later on in the same issue. And yeah, Wolverine survived, but that's only about a six on the what the f scale in the Punisher comics. Hey everyone, Greg here. Now let's take a look at some of the insane, crazy, and good God, what were they thinking moments in the Punisher comics. But before we do that, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of these comic book deep dives as well as our TV breakdowns and movie reviews. And if you're a Punisher fan, we'll have a spoiler chat on season one of Netflix's new show. As I mentioned, the Punisher has a very long and colorful history in the comics. Frank Castle has done it all. He's punched polar bears, he's been an angel, and he was used for a parody ad where he threatens to kill you if you drink and drive. But what about the time Doctor Strange fused with Frank to become Doctor Punisher? Yes, this happened. Back in 2015, Castle became Soldier Supreme in Secret Wars Battle World number one. In the year 2099, the multiverse is destroyed and all that remains was Battle World, which was controlled by Victor Von Doom. In the comic, Doctor Strange's soul jumps into the Punisher after the Punisher is bitten by a bunch of vampires. This weird fusion made Marvel's vigilante extremely powerful. With just a quick snap of his fingers, he turns a raging Hulk into a hapless Bruce Banner. Oh, and he wasn't done with Banner just yet. Dr. Punisher then deatomized Banner, turning him into a dust of particles. When the Punisher was at his peak of mainstream love, it was only a matter of time before he would be thrown into every crossover imaginable. He's married Wonder Woman at one point, they even had a child. He was once featured with Robocop and Terminator on the cover of Action Figure News and Toy Review in 1992. Yet sadly, there was no official comic with that trio. Please Marvel make this comic, I can only imagine what Robocop would do teamed up with Castle. Now with all the crossovers, there are two that really stand out. Let's start with a bad one, and that happens to be Punisher and Eminem. After an Eminem concert, the Punisher shows up, and it's not long before bullets start flying. During the scrum, the rapper runs into Barracuda, a killer for hire. The two head into an abandoned warehouse where Mathers pretends to be a hostage and pistol whips the Punisher as he enters. It turns out Barracuda was actually hired to kill, quote, some punk ass rappers, which leads to Punisher and Eminem being on the same side. Okay, you're gonna wanna stay away from that comic at all costs, just like Eminem's recent music. It's punishing. Nothing. What the f Now let's take a look at one of the Punisher's better crossovers, which happens to be Archie. In 1994, the Punisher travels to Riverdale with Marvel artist John Buscema handling the Punisher, while Archie regular Stan Goldberg drew the Riverdale crew. In the comic, Castle mistakes Archie for a drug dealer by the name of Red. The misunderstanding is eventually fixed, and Punisher eventually teams up with the Riverdale High Gang to save the day. This is one of the funniest crossovers ever made, and you should definitely check it out. With Riverdale on its second season, and the Punisher set to premiere on Netflix, I can only hope hope that someday Castle shows up as Jughead's secret uncle in a future crossover. Now, as I said earlier, the Punisher comic was extremely popular at one point. In the late 80s, he had four monthly publications. Now, when the 90s came around, the D.A.R.E. campaign, which was created in 1984, by the way, was in full swing and stories about fighting drug dealers were a thing. There's no hope with dope. So with that said, Marvel wanted Punisher to team up with Luke Cage who was segueing out of his 70s look and was fighting drug dealers. And for reasons I'll never truly understand, Mike Barron and Mark McLaurin and the rest of Marvel decided to turn Frank Castle black. In the comic, Frank's face was in pretty bad shape after a fight against Jigsaw in prison. After he escaped, in order to lay low and not be recognized by the Kingpin's men, Microchip hired a plastic surgeon to turn him black. It's like Face Off, but instead of changing faces, they just made him black. Seriously. It ain't easy. 
Now, the story was meant to deal with race issues of the time, with having Castle go through the racial problems that most minorities go through on a daily basis in the US. Okay, all right. Within one day of being black, he gets pulled over by the police. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the police beat him down when he gets out of the car. It ain't easy being white. It ain't easy being brown. All this pressure 